Hello friends, welcome back. We are making a lisp and uh, if you watched the last video, you know that we finished um, environments, uh, which is lisp speak for uh, variables. And uh, we now get to work on step four, which is some control structures, if functions and do blocks. So let's jump right in and get started. Um, I did notice reading through this, it says if you've not implemented um, reader and printer support for nil true and false you'll need to do that so that's a good place to start as good as any so we'll go into our uh, types header here and just do all the boilerplate um so i'll say true value false value and nil value and true false and nil here and like to sort my stuff. Okay, so we also need uh, true value, false value, and nil value. And this is true, false, nil, and let's sort these. True value here. We do need this and this though, so I'll put this here. We'll say that the type uh, override is return type true and for this overrides and it's going to return true like so and uh, we'll do that for false also nil oops we'll just substitute false for nil globally and type nil there yeah. okay got that and then um, is there anything over here that we need yes uh, guess we need to do this true value as true substitute false for nil and yes okay uh, I think that might be everything for for implementing the types now we need to go to the reader uh, CPP uh, we need to check if uh, if the token matches one of those three things. Um, and we have a reference, a uh, pointer to the token here, or um, I guess it's optional. It's an optional, yeah. So why don't we, why don't we do this? We'll say, this is a maybe token. <laughs> uh, if not maybe token, return that. Um, if it's okay, then we'll say token is maybe token value. I just think that feels a little better. Um, token, 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 there we go. So let's say if token is true, then um, we've only peaked the token. We haven't consumed it yet. So we have to call reader next here and then return a new true value um, this should really be a singleton. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Else if token equals false. And we also need a nil and okay. Uh, otherwise we get to do this one, nil, true and false. Well, let's see if it works. Make step th three EMV. Step three EMV. How will I know it works though, right? Uh, no, as false. Okay. Um, type CPP. Uh, did I just not? As false, as true, as no. As false. So this was supposed to be. Oh, this was supposed to be nil. Does that fix it? Yes, that does work. True, false, nil, and anything else is a symbol that gets looked up. Perfect. Okay, let's uh, let's add that, and then let's go back over here. Update the constructor initializer for the environments to take two arguments, binds and expers. Set each element uh, of the binds list to the respective element of the expers list. So these are two lists, and they should be the same length. EMVHP. So we'll make a new constructor that does that. 
um, list value binds and uh, list value. So um, I guess we need to say i0, i is less than binds uh, size. And we'll say, um, first let's assert that binds size is the same as expers size. Auto um, key is binds at i. Val is hmm, expers at i. And then we want to call set with key and val. Uh, this is a symbol. It must be a symbol and we'll, um, I mean, there's all kinds of opportunities here to raise an error that we could catch, but the assertions are fine for now. Uh, yeah. So we'll call that, um, add support to printer, uh, to print function values and we'll take care of that. I think we did something close to that, but um, it was, yeah, it was, it was angle brackets FN, so we'll just make that match what they wanted. And, okay, so fun, fun stuff. We get to do add do if and FN. Okay, so I can't wait for this. Um, I didn't actually, though, I didn't actually copy this. So let's go ahead and create this file, step three, step four. We're going to copy that over. I'll do CP step three to step four CPP. And uh, right here. So when we wrote this in the last video, um, I was thinking it was a little bit redundant, kind of kind of duplicate duplication of code. And now we're gonna have several more branches. So let's uh, let's do something with this. We'll say um, if first is a symbol, then we can put all of this inside of a an if, uh, and then we can say auto, um, what did they call it? They called it a special, special first as symbol, and then we can do, uh, just get rid of all of this, we can say special and special. Uh, yes, that will eliminate a bunch of code there. We don't need that to be in an else. Um, this is a, re a re rebind of the same, a redefinition. We'll call this eval list and eval list. Make sure I don't miss any eval list, eval list. Okay, oh, and then this one. Okay, so let's make sure that we didn't break uh, step four. Um, well, we haven't even tried step four yet. Something like that, close that, run, make step four, step four. Does it still work? Can I do numbers? Can I do addition? Can I do um, def x is three x? Okay, I didn't break it. That's good. I could have just run the test suite, I guess. Um, step, I'm not on step. There we go, step three. All the tests are still passing. We'll add that to the index. So now we can start adding more of these. And the next one we're gonna work on is uh, do. Uh, do evaluates all the elements of the list using eval AST and returns the final evaluated element. So I think we can just say um, auto, no, we can say value star results. Uh, size T i is one, i is less than list size, salt is eval ast
list at I env turn results assert that list size is greater than one. Um, might as well make this a null putter just for completeness. And that's the do, hopefully. We'll let our tests tell us later on if, if we did that correctly. Um, if, so this one will be fun. Evaluate the first parameter, which is the second element. So we'll say auto condition is the first parameter, which is list at one, um, because the zeroth item is the, the if itself. So it's gonna be something like if condition true result false result. And then you can also have the variant where you don't have a false. And so this has four items and this has three items. Um, so the condition is at one. I'm gonna say true expert is at two. And we're gonna say if list size is, gr is greater than or equal to four, then um, I star false expert, I guess. I could make this a um, ternary probably. Then it's list at three, otherwise it's a what? It says just return nil. So here we'll just do new nil value. Um, something like that. Great. If I with the first parameter, if the result is anything other than nil or false, then evaluate the second parameter, third element of the list, and return the result. Okay, uh, I was going to say other than nil or false. So I think I'm going to say eval condition environment, and I want to make a new method on all values is truthy then we're going to return eval um, true expert emv uh, else false expert env so we need to go implement um, is truthy so we'll do that here virtual bool is truthy actually let's just put it right here const return um, everything is true by default the only thing that is false is nil value this needs to be override and false value is false so those two things are false everything else is truthy so hopefully we did that right and then the last one we get to do is fn star. This will be a fun one. Return a new function closure. Well, we know how to do a closure. We're going to do, um, we'll just call it a closure, I guess. And we're going to bind some things. I'm not sure what yet. And we're going to take some parameters. I'm not sure what yet. Um, we'll get back to that. And then we want to return a new fn value with the closure like this. So that's kind of the code we want to use. Um, this goes inside of here. And so let's go look at our types and look at fn value and kind of how it's set up. Um, currently the way it's set up is I made a sort of like alias to this function pointer but uh, I believe we can do a std um, function of type. Oh, I always forget how this, like how this works. Std function cpp. It's, I think I've been here. Um, it's the return value parentheses args. Okay, so this goes inside of here. This goes there. And that's not a function pointer, we'll just call it a function. 
functional. Okay, so that's a function and it takes a function here and we'll make this a function and this a function. Let's go, let's go work on our add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, these are all happy. No matching constructor for initialization of f and value. It's just that one called div. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, cool. Okay, so we're here. Uh, this does this fig, uh, signature does not match, but if we have a size t arg count and value starts our args, then I think it will match. Maybe. Oh, because it's not returning a value star. If I return a new nil value, valuer, then I think it matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so create a new environment using the EMV closed over from the outer scope as the outer parameter. Okay, so uh, auto new EMV, we'll call it this FN EMV is new EMV with the outer this has bit me before um emv is a reference and i don't know it seems like i always have bugs when i put a reference in the bindings um, or the captures so if i put emv here it doesn't complain but this won't work because it's doing a copy of a reference or something i that i don't fully understand but I think if I do EMV pointer is the address of EMV and put that in there, then I'll be good. And uh, someone in the comments tell me like what's a better way of doing this? Because um, I definitely want it to be the pointer. I want to copy the pointer or I want to capture the pointer itself. I don't want to capture the reference. So yeah, let me... I mean, it seems like you should be able to capture a reference, but uh, yeah, I've had pr problems with that. So let me let me know what you think. If there's like a better way uh, to do that. So anyway, moving on. Create a new environment using that as the outer, the first parameter, second list element of AST from the outer scope as the binds parameter, and the parameters to the closure as the experts parameter. Okay, this is a little bit hard to unpack, um, but the first parameter. Uh, from the outer scope is the binds. So let's do binds is um, b -b 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 list at one as list. And the, so we can go ahead and pass that in here. And then this one's a tricky one. The parameters to the closure, that would be these arguments here that gets passed into the function because we're going to, when we call this function in our language, it's going to pass in the arguments like so. So we need to kind of bundle those up as a list. So we'll say auto experts is new list value for, let's say, experts push args i like that and then we'll pass experts here uh binds needs to be captured so we have this function environment that's what this comment was all about we can get rid of that call eval on the second parameter using the new environment return eval and it says return that yeah return eval um, I guess that's going to be like the body of the, of the function and we'll return body FN EMV. Okay. I think that's right. Um, body needs to be here as well. Um, there is no matching for evals fix available. I always like seeing fix available. So what are you going to say? Candidate function not viable, no known conversion from EMV star to EMV ampersand. Oh, right. Okay. 
Uh, we did that. If your target language does not support closures. Well, we do, so we can skip that. Try out some stuff. We're going to try out some things here. And um, did I have? No. Make step for if fn do and run it. Paste it. Uh, let's run this function with six and <laughs> return six. If we do plus one a and run it with six, we get seven. If we do def f function close and then we call f with eight, we get eight. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Okay, yeah, look at that. It's working. Okay, I think that is pretty much what we just did. Add a new file core core CPP and define an associative data structure in S namespace and maps. Okay, fine. Let's copy all that. So core CPP. Um core .cpp. Uh, would it be well do I need a header as well? I guess I do. And touch Chord header, uh, yeah, pragma once, define an associative data structure namespace that maps symbols to functions. Move the numeric function definitions into this structure. Okay, I mean, should I just use an unordered map? Include unordered map. Okay, so almost need a way to set this up. Um, so I believe I would do un, oh my goodness, unordered map, std string function, uh, build namespace. Uh, so I need string and I need types. Um, I think I'll move it over to the other file though. We'll do it here, uh, plus equals. And then we wanna move all of the core math stuff over to that step four. Where are you at? So div and add and subtract and multiply. Boom, that's nice. That's nice getting that out of there. And then I suppose we need uh, sub and mall and div. And this is going to be and good old div. <laughs> Again with the div thing. No viable overloaded. Is it the name? I mean, that's the only difference, right? Ugh. Is div like a special? Oh, goodness. Fine. Fine. We'll just do it your way. I don't even care. And then we're going to do return ns. Return. So now we can go back to step four. We can do this. We can say for auto pair in ns, which we haven't built yet, but that's okay. And then do env set. Is that what it said? It said something like that. Um, do, 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 and then map symbols to functions, move the numeric functions. And add set each. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so I say auto ns equals build ns. And we don't have that because that's over in core. Build ns, undeclared identifier. Uh, oh, build namespace. Namespace. Uh huh, ns. Do, 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 do. And it's going to set the. I guess it's going to be paired up first and this is going to be paired up second. Doesn't seem right, does it? So this is a basic string 
and this was be a symbol value. Okay, new symbol value, something like that. And that means we can get rid of those. Don't even need the curly braces. Okay, I think we did that. Um, let's see if this will run. Oh, I don't think it will um, make file. I think I need to add core.cpp right there. Yes, yes, yes. Plus three, four, that works. Um, I assume <laughs> that divide works too. Eight, two, yeah. Okay, let's add that to our index. Man, we're trucking right along. Check it out. Uh, and then we want to add all of these. And then we get to run the tests. And then we get some def deferrable stuff. So that might be in the next video. Uh, we'll see, see what we can get done. Core HP. So we want a pern and a list and a list. I think I'll do it like this if it has a question mark. Um, empty. Q count EQ for equal, say less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal. Okay. So we'll go create all those over on course uh, CPP. And um, we'll substitute all of the semicolons for curly. Brace, gotta figure out how to get that done. <laughs> there we go. Uh, space curly brace followed by a new line, followed by a curly brace, followed by a new line. There we go. Um, and let's paste our comment back in. So PRN calls PR stir on the first parameter with print readability set to true. PR stir with pre print readability true. Yeah, we don't have a print readable. Was that something I was supposed to do? Print readably. What step was I supposed to do that in? Uh, I was supposed to do that in <laughs> read print. Okay, that's fine. Um, it says deferrable. <laughs> uh, when print readability is true, double quotes, new lines, and backslashes are translated into their printed representations. Reverse of the reader print function, the main program should call PR stir with that set to true. Okay, um, we'll have to do that for this. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's not worry about it now. So calls PR stir. So we do std c out, and we're going to call pr stir on the first parameter. We're going to um, assert just lots of asserts. Our count is greater than um, or equal to one, and args zero followed by a new line. Return new nil value. I don't know why I put these empty things on there. Uh, no, okay. So that was happy. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave the comment above. Ooh, yeah, I like that. So let's take the parameters and return them as a list. Well, that's not too bad. Um, auto list is new list value. Return the list for size t i zero i is less than r count. Plus plus I don't need the squigglies. L push args I got that one done. Return true if the first parameter is a list, false otherwise. So let's throw an assertion here and we'll say return 
args uh, zero is a list is list uh, we don't have that yet but we can make it real quick kind of already have a few of these so we'll just make list return false list value and we'll make this return true which also work for a vector uh, hmm I don't actually think we want that to work for a vector. So for now, let's uh, let's say this is false, since that inherits from list value. Okay, um, so it is list, but it's returning a boolean, and we need it to return a new true value or a new false value. Incompatible operating types. I was kind of afraid of that. So if this uh, return new one of those, else return false. So is that better? E oh, return. Okay, now we're good. Empty, treat the first parameter as a list and return true if the list is empty. Okay, so here we go. Actually, we need both of those. Um, trace is a list. So let's let's say if it's a list, then and args zero as list is empty. We'll say and not is empty. Turn new true value. Else return new false value. Definitely need to make those into singletons. Um, I think that's right. Treat the first parameter as a list and return the number of elements. Okay, not too hard. Um, make sure that we actually have an argument. And if args zero, I'll just copy this. If it's a list, then return a new integer value with the uh, size. Else return um, zero, I guess. Okay, uh, you don't like that. Near from a size t to a long. Um, yeah, I don't care actually. I don't think I can do a static cast actually. Um, maybe you... Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, return that. Compare the first two parameters and return true if they are the same type. So do this. They're the same type. Oh, <laughs> if they're the same type and contain the same value. In the case of equal length list, each element of the list should be compared for equality. Um, okay. Two. Auto A is args zero. Auto B is args one. I'm gonna say if A type is not equal to B type, turn false. If A is a list or a is a vector we need to do that as well this is probably going to get a little out of hand um, vector where are you at little vector uh, say is vector true Man, I'm really conflicted about this is list thing. Let's say is listy is <laughs> true. This goes actually here. Is listy goes here. So false. Now we have a way of doing both. 
Um, that means we don't need this, at least not yet. Let's not add anything we don't need. So I'll say is listy. <laughs> um, I'm going to say if a as list size is not equal to b as list. We know they're the same type, so we can do this size, then return false. Otherwise, um, we don't have operator equal equal. I think we're going to need it. Um, virtual bool operator equal um, value star other. Uh, actually, let's just make it default um, turn false. That way we can just implement it enough of it to get uh, the tests passing. And for list value, we want to do it here. Say operator do 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 do. We'll do this in the um, CPP file. Don't need the virtual here, I think. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, that means all of this can go here. Other, I'm going to say if not other is listy. Oh, but is it a list or is it a listy? has to be an actual list it can't be a vector you can't compare a vector to a vector oh no I need to put this back the type has to match the type has to match so this type is not equal to other type then return false if uh, this can go away if my size is not equal to other as list size and return false, um, auto other list equals other <laughs> as list. Um, it's a little bit busy work here. So if the size is different, then return false. Otherwise, we're going to loop over them. Size t i is zero. i is less than size i plus plus i so we're gonna say um if at i is not equal to other at i then return false and if we got all the way through the loop then we can return true Okay, so I think we can just get rid of all of this, get rid of all that. I'm going to say return, and say if a equals b, and we need to dereference it. Uh, then return new, new true value, else false value. Okay, now what are you complaining about? Invalid operating system binary expression value and value. But I want you to use this. I want you to use that. Why won't you use that? Uh, operators, operator equal these goals. Hmm. Why no no? Why not worky? Uh. Okay. I mean, I guess it is const. So I'm not changing any of that. Um, let's just go make that const as well. Let's go over here and make this const. Virtual bool const candidate value, 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 and value. No no conversion from value to const value star. Oh, I thought I had to dereference these. 
Wild. Oh, if this was a reference type here. Of course, of course. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so if it's equal, they return true. Otherwise, okay. So this, I need I need to implement this for a few other types. At least some numbers. Let's <laughs> at least do integers, and then we'll maybe we'll wrap up the video at that. Um, const value other return other is integer. We need to go implement that. Um, and other as integer m long equals m long. Override. Oh, I thought I already did that. I thought I marked, marked those as const. Um, as integer. Oh, I didn't. Fine. I'll mark them as const. They don't. I think that's fine. Could be wrong about that. Of course, const. Let's see how many errors we have. A lot. This is definitely const. This is const. This is const. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these can be const. Let's see what else is broken. <laughs> Probably a lot. Probably a lot. Oh my goodness, it's bad. It's bad. Set it cast from const value to star to list value star cast with qualifiers. Yeah, I don't know. I really kind of struggle with this a little bit. Um, substitute const for nothing. Okay, so now what was broken? Const cost value store other. Okay, maybe. Maybe? Saw some errors go away. Where are my errors at now? Okay, so. Okay, I think all the rest are not, no return value, and uh, I just need to go over to CPP core and. Um, copy this to everything and then we'll say oh yeah we need those as well and right now I'm going to assert that a is integer um, and B is integer I'm going to say return I'll say uh, if a as integer too long is less than B integer too long. Return new true value, else return new false value. And I think we can just copy this and tweak it for all the rest. So this is greater than equal, greater and less than equal. Okay, little little curly lines go away, almost. I think we're getting closer. Closer, closer, closer. Oh yes, yes. Okay. Um, where are we? Where are we? Go to the top level and run the tests. Okie dokie, I will do that. Um, oh, CPP. Okay, some progress. We got a bunch of passing tests. Um, some not though. What did I do wrong? Oh, I gotta set all of these. Um, what's a good way to do that? I guess copy this, copy that, set this in a something equals that, substitute all the parens for nothing. 
Um, okay, so this is going to be PRN list list question empty question count equal less than less than equal greater than greater than equal okay does that get us some more passing tests i won't know the count because we've got some sort of error right here uh looks like potentially more passing tests our equals is definitely not working I didn't get it backwards. Uh, why is our equal not working? I just want to go look at this again. Does this one need to be dereferenced? Yes, that one needs to be dereferenced. That's what I was doing wrong. And that means over in types, CPP, I knew that something had to be dereferenced. I knew it. Um, that means this needs to be dereferenced. Because I was just comparing the pointers. Makes perfect sense. No match for upper, not equal upper in type star value and value star. Um, I mean, I guess I could do not equal. That's kind of cheating, isn't it? Uh, equals list one two list one three is false but if I change this to a two it's true okay I feel like that's working um, we've got we got to do some strings looks like it says def not found I must have done something wrong with my do in the last step even though the tests are passing PRN1027. Yeah, do. Oh no, these pass these tests were not passing. I never never did this. So I did something wrong with do. Okay, I think that's probably good for this video. I'm gonna wrap it up and say that we did some solid progress here. I feel good, I feel good. Well, thanks for hanging out with me in this video. I hope that you learned something. And if you see something I need to change or do something better, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.